So today we're going to be learning how to create our login system. So to create our login system, the first thing we need to do is create the form. So we've already created the login.php page. So on our login.php page, the first thing we're going to do is create the form. So now that we've created the form, let's preview it in the browser. So you can see we have our login form. So now we need to actually log the user in. So to log them in, we're going to create a PHP block up here. And we're going to go to our create account page and we're just going to copy this DB file. So now we can connect to our database and we can use our DB class. So once again, what we're going to do first is check if the form has been submitted. And once we've checked if the form has been submitted, we're going to grab the username and the password values. So now that we've grabbed the username and the password from the text boxes, we need to query our database. So the first thing we're going to do is check if the username exists. So here what we've done is we've said query the database, select the username from users, where the username is equal to the username value we got from the text box. And we passed that value to the function using our array over here, just like we did in the last video. And then by simply saying if, and then passing the query, we're saying if this query returns true, which it will if the user is found and it will return false if they're not, then we're going to run the code in here. Otherwise, the user doesn't exist. So otherwise, we'll say else user not registered. So let's just try that really quick. So if I put in a random username that doesn't exist in the database, and I click login, you can see it says user not registered. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say db query. And here we're going to put in our query to get the user's password. So what this query does is it gets the password of the user with the username that was entered into the text box. And what we want to do is access the zeroth element of the array that's returned because it's going to return an array and that array is going to hold all of the rows that are returned. But because there's only going to be one row returned, we only need to access the zeroth element. And once we have the row that's returned, we want to access the column that's returned, which is password. So we want to access that with the word password. So this should give us the password from the database. Then what we want to do is we want to give this password to the password verify function. So we say if password verify password comma and then we put in our query. The password is the password from the text field and the second parameter is the hashed version that we just got from the database. And then if this method returns true, the passwords match and if it returns false, the passwords don't match and we can't log in the user. So we'll say echo logged in. Otherwise we'll echo incorrect password. So let's test this now. So we have a small syntax error, so we can fix that. We just left out a parenthesis. So let's put in just nothing and click login. It says user not registered because there's no user with no username. If we put in how code, which is registered, we put in any random password and click login. It says incorrect password. And finally, if I put in how code and I put in the correct password, which is test pass and click login, it says logged in. So of course the user isn't actually logged in. We need to use cookies for that, but that's what we'll cover in the next part of the series because that's quite a significant part of the series on its own. So it deserves its own video. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be using cookies and login tokens to log users in and to keep them logged in in the browser for a certain length of time. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you next time.